hey, this is Richard Barone, and you're listening to No Good Music. Open up my mind about Greenwich Village and about this mm -hmm. music scene of the 60s and why it was important. Number one, so he did that. Yeah. Um, he also opened up my mind about the idea that music, pop music, does not start with the Beatles. That mm -hmm. it goes back decades before the yeah. Beatles. That it goes back to vaudeville and before, and the early recorded music is mm -hmm. really the turn of the 20th century. You know, the beginning yeah. of the 20th century is when you know Edison, yeah. the cylinders, and the yeah. uh, you know all the different mm -hmm. early water recordings. I, I have a Victrola, really so into. yeah, I put something on from uh, 120 years ago. Yeah, right. With the so so did Tiny Tim. He listened yeah. in his bedroom. He had a Victrola. Mm -hmm. He would have all these old records. I didn't, this was all new to me. I didn't really understand how pop music had a long, long history. So he taught me a lot about that. And when we recorded songs, they were usually from the 1930s. Mm -hmm. wow. So we made an album that's, it's the album that we have out that I, I produced for him then. It's called uh, Rare Moments, because that was his phrase, these are rare moments. He would always tell me that. We were, these are rare moments. Uh, Rare Moments, Volume One. Uh, I've never seen a straight banana. Yeah, love okay. that. Title. Now that yeah. song, I do too. I, you know, for me, even at that age, I thought, where did he even find this? But then, of course, <laughs> later I researched it. And it was, it was, it was from 1933 or 1935, and mm -hmm. it was actually a song that was a minor British hit for a, a, a group, a, a singing group. You know, I've never seen a straight banana. He had a very funny performance of it. It's on the record, and people mm -hmm. can hear it on the streaming services. Yeah, uh, it's. It came out. Of, it finally. This was the problem at, th at that age. I had zero record company connections. I didn't really okay. know Clive Davis then or, or Seymour Stein or people mm -hmm. who then became a big part of my life or friends or associates. Yeah. I didn't know anyone to take it to. So it sat in my collection mm -hmm. until 20. So this is like we're talking years before. It didn't make it out as a record until 2009. Yeah. Right. But yeah. I had the takes since I was a teenager. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it finally came out um, and uh, it came out on Collector's Choice Records and people can find it like on. Uh, uh, but it's also on all the streaming services. Yeah, and it was I really, found it on Apple Music. And... Yeah, it's on Apple Music. And now, it's, now I really you, love it. It's. Go ahead. Now you named it Rare Moments Volume One. Is there more that you're. Well, yes. Like yes. And no, there. there, there it's not that I'm holding it. Yes, there's no, I do, I do love recording Tiny Tim. That what we made for that album, I thought was a concise album. Okay, yeah. You know, I have extra stuff. And what would, there's also on the same label, uh, oh no, a different label actually, uh, a different label. We did a record called Tiny Tim's America. That to me mm -hmm. is the is another phase of the Rare Moment series. Okay. Um, that if people want to check that out, that is a very cool vinyl record. Um, and the songs are a lot of a lot of uh, songs immigrant. I would call them immigrant songs. Tiny was very interested in the idea of different cultures bringing their songs into American popular music. Mm -hmm. So there's songs that are kind of like German songs or Yiddish and yeah. you know Yiddish mm -hmm. songs and <laughs> really funny, really funny stuff. And from the 30s and or, I don't think I don't think even as recent as the 40s. I think 30s and 20s. Yeah, but right. immigrant songs. So that's Tiny Tim's America. That's a really thematic album. Those were based on tapes that were found after he passed. Mm -hmm. He really, it seems like he really enjoyed working with me because when he did die, sadly, in the 90s, yeah. he left a lot of the tapes that we had done on top of the stack and had my name on it to contact oh. me. Oh, wow. So the, nice. Yeah. I was thoughtful. contacted. That was very thoughtful so, of him. Wow. So, so since, since then, I get called when there's a Tiny Tim project Often mm -hmm. I get a phone call like, oh, can you help us finish this project, you know, this album? So with Tiny Tim's America, we added, I like to add a few instruments because I know he loved, he loved to have musical arrangements, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So I try to add like this instruments he might've liked on that one. We put a tuba and we added some, you know, some cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, not a lot of holes. Uh, uh, more, more, we use a tuba, yeah. Yeah, more, we, yeah. yeah, we use it for bass yeah. and mm -hmm. more ukuleles, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. more, more, sometimes more is more, sometimes less is more, but we, yeah. I like yeah. I like making his records sound more finished. So that was just from a cassette that he left behind. Yeah, wow. and uh, I love that album. That's Tiny Tim's America. So the two albums that I produce are, are uh, I've never seen a straight banana, mm -hmm. and Tiny Tim's America. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I have so, to I have to give. There's more. There's more. There's always something that we find. Yeah. I have and to I'm give him more. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I have no, to give man. him more of a listen because I, you know, I think most people only know Tiny Tim from that one song. Tip to yeah. pull-ups. 
Right. Well, and, just our know. Younger, and our <clears throat> younger listeners won't even know who he is. And then there's a lot of people that just know his name. I know. That's it. I know. Name. He's just the name. I know. People. Yeah. yeah. Listen, for some artists that I work with and some artists that work in my life, I feel a part of my job is to keep their, uh, if, at least their name, their name and their yeah. legacy a lot. Mm-hmm. Now, what Tony, the thing to keep in mind when you listen to Tony is that he's really a, like a musicologist of sorts who is performing songs from different eras and really mm-hmm. educating us about oh, the yeah. history of popular music. Mm-hmm. So as long as you keep that in mind and know that it's not, it's frivolous, it can sound frivolous, <laughs> but it's also, there's more There's more to it, you know? Yeah. And he has a lot of range of voices. They're based on, like that falsetto, it's not just something that he <laughs> created. That mm-hmm. is based on a pruning style of the 1920s yeah. where men would sing in a high vocal mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. that. You know, R&B, R&B singers have a, a falsetto they use mm-hmm. sometimes. Think yeah, of Smokey yeah. Robinson or the other. Yeah. Well, the, you know, they, that there's a legacy of that. And it's like mm-hmm. he was going back to that legacy where men would sing in different ranges, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then he, of course, he made it silly and he had this effeminacy that he would add to it all. But <laughs> yeah. that is just part, that's part of his thing. And he was performing in gay and lesbian clubs in New mm-hmm. York. Yeah. Yeah. And he 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 made it he made it campy, you know, mm-hmm. for that audience. Yeah. yeah. 